happy Saturday. We're going to read another book from No Hope Beyond This Point. Um, this one's going to be called The Long Drive. My daughter was the cinematographer for the intro section to this video, so let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And um, <laughs> as you can see, my painting that is normally up on my wall is down on the ground because the command strips decided they didn't want to hold it anymore and I will have to fix that. So hopefully next video it'll be back up on the wall where it belongs. All right, <clears throat> the long drive. Charlene glances at her watch as she runs down the flight of stairs. She can't make out the time in the dim light cast by the single lamp near the entrance. At the bottom of the stairs, she grabs her keys, wallet, and a pack of cigarettes by the door. She leaves her house and locks the door behind her, briskly walking down the short sidewalk to her car parked in the driveway. She gets in and starts it up. The clock on the dash reads 9.08 p.m. She has plenty of time. It's chilly outside, so she sits in the driveway, letting the heater warm the car up. She stifles a yawn and decides to have a cigarette while she waits. She pulls one out, lights it, and draws in a drag as she tosses the cigarette pack into the passenger seat with her wallet. She moves her cigarette to her left hand and searches for a good station on the radio. After finding a song she likes, she takes another drag of her cigarette and leans her head back. Charlene closes her eyes and listens to the music. She chastises herself for not taking a nap after her classes were done. She knew her friend was throwing a party tonight. Stifling a second yawn, Charlene takes another drag, letting the smoke drift towards the ceiling, her eyes still closed. She rests another minute or two before sitting up with a sigh. Charlene decides she's let the car idle long enough. She sniffs out her cigarette in the ashtray and flicks on her headlights. Charlene puts her car in reverse and backs slowly down her sloped driveway. She's careful to make sure no one is coming since people speed down this road all the time. And it doesn't help that they haven't installed any streetlights here. Why would they, she thinks. It's not like many people live out here anyways. Charlene puts the car into drive and heads towards the party on the other side of town. She sets her cruise control to 55. She's been pulled over one too many times on this stretch of highway. The cops like to hide in the dense vegetation on the side of the road, knowing this is a notorious spot for speeders. The song she was listening to ends, and the next one causes her to scrunch up her nose. She hates the song. Charlene reaches forward and pushes the preset buttons of the radio. Her focus turns more to her search and less on the road. On the fourth try, she finds another good tune and straightens up in her seat, only to grab the wheel and hit the brakes. The car rapidly slows down but doesn't stop. Her headlights catch the tail end of some large shadow as it slinks back into the brush. Charlene's heart hammers in her chest as she cruises past the area where she saw the animal disappear. There's no trace of it. Coming back to her senses, Charlene's eyes dart to her rearview mirror. No one there. She's relieved. Better get back up to speed before someone rear ends me. Taking her foot off the brake, she presses down on the gas until she's up to 55 again. Her eyes briefly flick back and forth to double check that nothing else is trying to jump out of the fields on each side. During the daytime, it's beautiful out here. Charlene loves seeing the stalks of corn sway in the breeze, the farmer's fields broken up by wildflowers and trees. At dusk and dawn, though, it's important to watch for all the critters running out into the road. What the heck kind of animal was that? Charlene wonders. Seemed large. And I'm pretty sure we don't have any bear out here. At least I don't believe we do. Charlene shakes the thought away as another song comes on that she doesn't like. She keeps both eyes focused on the road as she chooses a different station. I should have passed that farmhouse by now, Charlene thinks a few minutes later. She lets out a yawn, then crinkles her brow in concentration. Yeah, I should be at least a mile past it. But she can't remember seeing the building. She glances further down the highway to better gauge how far she is when she sees a shadow take shape at the side of the road. This time, Charlene's prepared. She eases up on the gas and checks that no one is right behind her. There are no lights in either direction, just her and whatever creature that is. Seems too large to be a dog. Some drunk, maybe? She slows down a little more, her speedometer reading 42. She moves slightly into the other lane in case whatever it is decides to jump out at the last second. It doesn't. Instead, it moves back into the undergrowth, just enough to keep her from clearly seeing its shape. Its head, though, follows her car's movement as she passes by. Charlene involuntarily shivers. What was that? 
She glances back in her rear view, but all she can see is the red glow of her taillights. She turns her attention back in front of her and nearly slams on the brakes. It's there, just ahead of her again, off to the side of the road. Her heart pounds in her chest as she squeezes the wheel with both hands. Her eyes widen as she coasts past the hulking, shadowy creature. It stares at her with eyes that appear black in the glare of the headlights. Charlene manages to notice it has matted fur, but what color, she couldn't say. A horn startles her out of her stupor and she glances wildly around for the source. A large truck is bearing down on her car from behind. She picks up her speed only for the truck driver to blast the air horn again. The semi's lights flood the interior of her car as it gets closer to her bumper. One more honk and it moves into the other lane to pass her. Charlene keeps her eyes straight ahead, not wanting a confrontation with the driver as the truck flies past her and into the darkness ahead. Its receding taillights are like fading embers in the night. Hands tight on the wheel, Charlene dares to glance at the clock. 9.43 p.m. How am I still on this highway? Did I pass my turn off? She looks around for a familiar landmark, but nothing stands out. I didn't sit in the driveway that long. Maybe for a song or two, but still. She keeps her speed at 55, hoping to get out of this wooded area soon, but not desperate enough to risk getting a ticket. Everything her headlights hit casts long shadows out into the gloom. She sees movement from every shrub and sapling that whizzes past her windows. Her heart begins to race and her knuckles turn white as she clenches the steering wheel. A blur darts out from her left and she turns the wheel away from it. The shape stops short and Charlene sees that it's only a bunny. Calm down, she tries to tell herself, but it's hard. Perhaps it wouldn't be so bad if a cop pulled me over, she considers. At least I wouldn't be alone. Another blur darts out and Charlene begins to veer around it, but it's large. Much larger than she expects and it quickly moves into her path. She jerks the wheel and hits the gravel, pulling her tires off the road. She corrects the car, rocks shooting up from behind. Charlene looks out the driver's side window to see what she nearly hit this time. The creature's face is pressed to the glass. She lets out a shriek and her hands automatically move to cover her eyes, the wheel turning with no one to guide it. The car lurches back onto the gravel and down into a ditch. Charlene pitches forward, hard against the steering wheel. Her ribs are bruised. Her body then jerks back as the car comes to an abrupt stop. Her head hits the headrest and her eyes pop open involuntarily. She looks around, expecting to see the large beast bearing down on her. And for a moment, her sleep-addled brain conjures its form. She shrinks back in fear, then yells as pain sears her leg. The sudden shock causes her to take in her surroundings. She momentarily ignores the agony she feels in her leg as she realizes she's still in her driveway. The clock above the radio reads 921. What, she thinks before pain brings her back to the present. Ow! Charlene shouts, finally looking down to see what's biting her. Her hand is resting on her left leg while the cigarette burns a growing hole into her pants. She quickly beats the embers off her clothes, causing the still smoldering cigarette butt to fall to the floorboard. Immediately, she bends to retrieve it letting up on the brake in the process. In her panic, Charlene fails to notice that she's moving. It takes a few moments for her fingers to locate the butt and pull it back up to safety. The car continues to gently roll down the hill. Charlene slumps back in her seat, the cigarette butt in her hand. Relief floods through her, but confusion mars her features as the garage door recedes from her. The car softly thumps into the road, and the sound of an air horn causes Charlene's head to whip around. Headlights fill her vision as a semi barrels towards her car with no time for either to move. It hits her broadside, shoving the remains of her car into the brush. The semi jackknifes across the road. The smell of burning tires fills the air as blood pools in Charlene's lungs. The steering wheel is pressed tight against her ribs. Her head aches and her limbs feel numb. She fights to stay conscious. Charlene looks around in a daze, her eyes landing on a dark, matted animal glaring at her through the windshield. She tries to move, but is held tight to her seat. She draws in a breath to shout for help, but chokes and coughs, blood staining her lips. She watches with wide eyes as it stalks closer to the wreckage. There's nowhere to go, she realizes. The large, shadowy creature crunches over the debris with hunger in its coal black eyes. It moves around the car, and just as it did in her dream, the creature presses its face to her window. Charlene tries one more time to scream, but nothing comes out. She begins to succumb to the darkness encroaching on her vision. 
Charlene can still make out the shape of the creature to her side, though. She hears its nails scratch across the car. It seems to be searching for a way in. She closes her eyes, not wanting to see what will happen if it succeeds in opening the door. Too late, she thinks, as the rush of cool air blows across her face. She hears the squeak of hinges moving and a low growl near her ear. Charlene's last sensation is the feeling of wet drool trailing down her arm. And with that, she welcomes unconsciousness. <laughs> there you go. I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, that one, I believe, was a dream I had. Most of my stories, if you'll notice a trend, um, come from dreams or when I'm half awake. Um, others just kind of pop into my head when I'm just like out and about doing things and hopefully I can remember them enough to get them down on paper. Uh, this one I wrote down, um, I think when I was a later teenager and, uh, it was just the premise though of the fact that this girl was sitting in her driveway, um, smoking a cigarette, listening to music on a very steep, like inclined driveway and had fallen asleep, not realizing it and keep seeing this like monster on the side of the road. Um, only to later wake up and unfortunately roll into the street and get hit. Um, I think in the original, I did not have the monster uh, come and get her afterwards. She simply just uh, died in the car accident, unfortunately. I mean, she does obviously in this too, except the monster gets a tasty snack. <laughs> so happy ending for the monster, sad ending for everybody else. Um, but yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again in two weeks. <laughs> Bye.